About a month ago, I shot a shop tour video in Jason Barlow's shop. If you haven't already seen it, a link is in the description below. It's on my second channel. Be sure to check it out uh, after this video. But while I was at Jason's shop, he showed me one of, the, one of his turned duck calls with a custom ring with his logo on it. And man, oh man, it looked awesome. Uh, both the turning and the ring looked awesome. And I asked him where he got the, the rings made. And after he told me, I told him I was going to steal his idea and get a set of rings with my logo on it and make a full set of chisel handles. So that's exactly what I did. I got a set of six for my chisel handles with my logo and a single larger one for something later. And I'm not exactly sure what to make with the larger one. So if you have a suggestion for how I should use it, uh, then be sure to leave me a comment and let me know. But to get a custom set of your own, go to goldscustomcalls.com. It's not a sponsored endorsement. I have no affiliation with the business, but I am really impressed with the product. And it's always a good idea to support a small business whenever possible. So go to goldscustomcalls.com and um, tell them Jay sent you. My objective was to duplicate a simple chisel handle that I turned last year to not only make all of my chisel handles match, but also to get rid of the super heavy composite handles that came with them that are absolutely horrible when you're doing long stuff like cutting dovetails and then make your fingers really, really hurt. Uh, I have a single board of eight quarter walnut with some curl in it and a single board of eight quarter bird's eye maple to choose from for these handles. Um, but I decided to go with maple because I think either one of them would look great, but I think the maple will, will handle the abuse of a mallet better in the long run. Before we can shape the handle, we need to actually prepare the blank to be a handle. So to start, I turn the blank between centers into a rough cylinder, then measure my chuck to determine the appropriate size tenon for the chuck, then use the parting tool to cut that size tenon then remove the spur center and mount the chuck, then mount the piece into the chuck via the tin, then turn the cylinder down to the largest diameter for the final handle size, which in this case was one and three eighths of an inch, then drill a slightly undersized hole in the end, which will eventually accept the metal part of the chisel, and put some reference marks on the blank to indicate the high and low points, as well as the ring length and final handle length, uh, I was going off my last handle here, so getting these marks was pretty easy. If, if you don't have anything to go off of, well, then that's one of the joys of wood turning. You can make anything you can think of. Finally, the handle shaping can begin, and I started with using the parting tool to create an appropriate sized tenon for the ring. Now, I snuck up on a perfect fit, and it took quite a few tries, uh, but remember that running the lathe in reverse will not put the wood back on if you screw up. So take some very shallow passes to really sneak up on the fit. And I was going for a kind of a slip fit here. The, the glue will hold it in place. And as you drive the, the metal piece into the hole, uh, the, as you mount the handle on the chisel, uh, it'll expand a little bit. So it's, it'll be all good. It's been a little while since I turned anything. So I used a couple different tools to shape the first one to see which one would be easier for me. And I started with the spindle gouge for the inside corner shaping which is my least favorite style gouge to use. I, I, just, I just don't have the technique down, so I'm not consistent with it. And um, that being said, uh, the, the only cut I used it for here turned out really, really great, so I'm not gonna complain. Then I went back to the roughing gouge for the finger grip area, which was large enough that the large radius of the roughing gouge uh, wasn't a problem at all. It was super easy to do, but Really, I should have cut a depth line with a parting tool first to kind of let me know where to stop with my cut. Uh, it turned out all right, but uh, I, I noted that for the next one. I'm not good at making outside corners at all with a spindle gouge, so I used my bowl gouge to shape the last outside corner uh, on the butt end of the chisel with a scraping cut. It wasn't a tight radius or anything, so it was, it was very easy to do so long as the uh, bowl gouge is nice and sharp. If you ride the bevel of your tools when making the inside curves, you should have a nice, smooth, tear-out free surface, assuming that you're um, cutting downhill uh, right off the tool, uh, which I did for both sides of the finger grip, but the rest of the handle required a little bit of sanding. Uh, and I also took that sharp edge off of the finger grip point. 
To install the ring, I used CA glue and made sure to align the logo with a flat part of the grain. And I mounted the first chisel off camera, but I'll show you how in just a minute. So at this point, one done and four to go. No, five to go, five to go. I had a um, an extra chisel from a different set that I wanted to include with this set because I made a custom dovetail chisel out of it. Uh, so yeah, five to go. Just like with anything else, after you've made one, the rest should be a little bit easier. Uh, and they were in this case, but I did change the process up just a little bit. This time I used the parting tool and a piece of plywood with a bunch of half holes cut in it around the perimeter uh, for a sizing gauge to determine the max overall diameter of the handle. And then I used the rough and gouge on its side, somewhat like a wide parting tool to very quickly remove the rest of the waste. Uh, then again, drill a hole in the end like normal Use the parting tool to establish the ring tenon, finger grip depth, and the final length of the handle. Then I use the rough and gouge to make all of the inside corner cuts. And remember to ride the bevel of the gouge and adjust the angle left or right to steer the cut. Then I use the bull gouge once again for the outside corner and a little bit of sanding and then remove the handle with the parting tool. The obvious downside of any lathe project is the horrible, horrible mess that a lathe creates. Uh, I, I was fighting the weather for the whole this whole project. I was wanting to do this outside on the driveway, but it was the, the weather looked like it was threatening rain at any moment, so I, I cut it all inside. Uh, but luckily, it only took 10 minutes to get the shop clean again, and. I wanted to get this done before the finishing process. To remove the old handles, I put the chisel in a vise and twisted the handle back and forth to loosen it, which honestly was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I thought it would put up a lot more fight than what it did. Uh, even on the small chisels where I didn't really have much grip in the vise. Uh, but anyway, installing the new handles is done with a mallet, making sure to align the logo with the bottom of the chisel as in my case, that's the side that will be seen when they're all up on the wall. I wanted to use shellac for the handles, but I didn't have any on hand, so I used regular mineral oil instead. Now, it's it's not going to offer as much protection from dirty hands, uh, but it's better than nothing. And for the time being, that's just uh, what I had. So the next time I pick up some shellac, I'll put a coat or two on. And it shouldn't change the color much. It may darken it just a little bit, but not much. I don't expect it to anyway. In the end, they turned out great. I could not be happier with them. They look fantastic. But more importantly, the weight reduction. These things weigh a lot less than those composite handles, which hopefully that'll result in less hand and finger fatigue uh, when I use them in long, like, uh, dovetail sessions, I guess. But anyway, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Check out my second channel, JBaits2 for non-project shop and woodworking related videos. Until next time, take care and I'll talk to you later.